Hey folks, um, I'm back to uh, respond to Brett's thread regarding great second albums. And I went ahead and uh, took a little time and I could do a couple, I could, I have a stack here, but I could tell you I could do another stack um, once it got going because it's one of those things where you have to think about it. And, um, so I'll sh just share what I have, and, um, pardon, let's see, do I need to adjust my camera just a little bit? Okay, there we go. What we're listening to is not a second album, it's just a great album. It's Kit Watkins, who was in Happy the Man, as well as Camel, Labyrinth. This is just one of my favorite albums, period. A lot of times I'll tell you about records, I don't tell you what year. 1981. Azimuth Records, a private label, I believe, yeah. Might have even been his label. Love this album. Matter of fact, I think Camel did an arrangement, or Happy the Man did an arrangement of some of these songs. Not surprisingly. Okay. <clears throat> Here are some uh, great second albums in my humble opinion which is what this is all about and it will also um, reflect my age because this is a small stack but uh, time wise it's all over the place and I have to start with the CD because I had the vinyl and when I bought the CD when it came out which was at the time a big deal because it was still on early days of CDs. I gave the, al the album to one of my best friends. I wouldn't dare ask for it back. <laughs> I think it, I think it probably still has value to him. But um, talk about a incredible second album, especially compared to the first one. Dead Can Dance, Spleen and Ideal. The first album was very interesting and had moments of inspiration where it's like, wow, you know, what what have we here, you know, which was part of what um, made me become such a big fan of Dead Can Dance. But this really, when it came out, it was like, whoa, this was heavy, heavy, excellent. So that's a good start for, um, Great second albums. Going back, Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention um, made quite the uh, entrance with um, their first album, which was the first rock double album, if I understand. But the follow up, absolutely free. Even though you could say that throughout the whole album it's not a monster. What you can say, especially the way they culminate the album, side two, the way it comes to an end with Brown Shoes Don't Make It, and um, I think it's America Eats and Goes Home. It's brilliant. I mean, it's like what it shows is that m what Frank is up to is not a one shot thing, it's not a fluke. It's like this here we have something, and this is autographed by Don Preston and Jimmy Carl Black. And possibly one other, because uh, I did meet uh, Bunk Gardner, but I think it's just Jimmy Carl. Okay, yeah, Mothers. Now, their first album is hailed as a landmark, and I agree with it. But then they come out with this. Wire. Chairs missing. Oh. Whoa. It's like, you can't, to me it was like, and I was on this at the time. I was in, you know, I was into this, you know, pink, pink, you know, chair, pink flag when it happened. I mean, I was following the punk thing. And when this came out, it was not disappointing. It was like, you didn't think it could have gotten better, and it did. And then it got better than this with 154 after. But Chairs Missing for a second album. Digital Sex, we did, um... Um, sand in my joints off of here and um, I think we did one off of Pink Flag we did a couple of wire songs 
digital sextant. I may have recordings. They may be bad, but I think I have recordings of us doing wire way before Omaha knew what the fuck wire was about. Okay, let's keep going. Renaissance, the band started by um, the Yardbirds' Keith Ralph. He was gone by the time the second their second album, which was the introduction of Annie Haslam. What an introduction, prologue. This is a fantastic album. Um, a lot of classical themes just out and out taken and used on here but to great effect this is a fantastic album I say that a lot because I mean it <laughs> it's wonderful very uh, <clears throat> the cover is is perfect as a visual to the album and down by the sea in particular just takes you to another place it just takes you away this whole album is fantastic okay one of my favorite bands and one of the, a very influential band to me who were highly influenced by Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention their second album is a blow away Faust so far I mean the first album Faust with the uh, x-ray for the hand is amazing but so far it's like whoa by the time this album ends Really? Seriously. I have two copies of this. This is a the recommended records numbered reissue. Six hundred copies came out quite a while ago with um all the prints. Let me just show them right quick. This album is just a headbutt info. For a second album, this album is amazing. I uh, still, it's uh, an experience, but um, I can still recall many experiences as memories of listening to this album alone and with friends, either straight or altered, where the album was having such an impact, I still remember that time of listening to it. It's a hell of a second album, huh? Faust, so far. I love the band Catherine Wheel. I got that poster behind me, the, uh... There we go. My boys, Catherine Wheel. I've been meaning to put up another poster, and, um... After talking a little bit about different things... You know, I want to represent these guys. I mean, I, I, I wish there was a chance that they could, um play together, you know, one more time. What an amazing band. Speaking of, Chrome. <laughs> Man. Talking about an amazing second album. Ferment was just a gobsmacker to me. Still is. I just love this band. And then they follow it up with this. You know, everything. Fripp. Ursa, Ursa Major Space Stage Station. Kill Rhythm, the whole album. This is an incredible second album. Let's keep going. One of my all-time favorite albums. Mini Pops. Sparks in a Dark Room. This is their second album. Their first album. I have it. I could almost say the name, but this is on Factory Records. Um, this is just a monster album. Monster. Mini Pops. Sparks in a Dark Room. Look it up. I'm, I'm sure you can listen to quite a bit of this online. And they have some video. And I don't know about for this album, but there's some Mini Pops video. Second album, Blow Away. Just a light years. Co I, compared to the first album, it's like, whoa. This is, I love this album. French Band Magma. The first album, which I only have on CD, is is really quite the introduction as far as just quite an introduction but the second album which also goes by the uh, title of 1001 degrees centigrades whew, once again this is an, an example of where the second album shows what the band is about is not a fluke and it's not weak it's it's another strong album it's not 
it, 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 this is one that definitely doesn't suffer the sophomore slump. Like the cover. I mean, this is a perfect cover for it. It's just, you know, fiery on fire, you know, just the band. Whoa. Another one. Magazine's first album, Real Life, quite the debut, just amazing. But to me, their, their masterwork is their second album, Secondhand Daylight. This album to me is just a tour de force of what rock could be, can be at that time. And even, even now, I think this album just holds up. It's badass. And this is my original copy, which I've kept in great shape. Yeah, I've had this album since what year did this come out? 1979. I really value this record a lot. Badass. John McGee on guitar. Howard DeVoto as a writer and a singer. Amazing. So, um, there's a lot of records that I couldn't think of that I may do another version of this, but great topic, Brett. Okay talked about this not too long ago this was like when I was doing the record of the week sorry I've dropped the ball I'm not gonna worry about it I may do some record of the weeks but you know Mahavishnu Orchestra Birds of Fire this is their second album whoa whoa to this day this is an absolute classic album of modern music whatever you want to call it jazz fusion this album is just, it stands alone. Ma Birds of Fire, Mahavishnu Orchestra. This is, a, I haven't used this term in a while. Such a monster of an album. Such a monster of an album. You know, their first album is a complete blow away. And then they do, they top it with this, Birds of Fire. In my opinion, the same thing happens with this band. Weather Report's first album is so ahead of its time that it's like it happens and it's like almost a non-event, although it attempts to be, and it is sort of within music circles because people who were known the musicians were like, whoa, check this out. But then their second album, I Sing the Body Electric, which was still so far ahead of its time and avant-garde in contrast to what else was happening that it still, it took a couple more albums before the public caught up with these guys, but for a second album, this is where it really starts to come together. Incredible album. Ralph Towner does a guest uh, spot on here that some of his best, most blazing uh, guitar work. You know, it's kind of like Ralph Towner like doing a Mahavishnu with Weather Report. I'm, I'm vibing strong, but I mean every word. All you got to do is listen to this, okay? I say, I also say that the music speaks for itself, okay? Great topic, Brett. Great second album. It's Weather Report. I sing the body electric. Love that cover, too. Got a few more, so let me just hurry up here. <laughs> okay. I heard Caravan from the beginning. I heard their first album. It was the first thing I heard was lucky to find it as a cutout as a kid. But their second album, if I could do it all over again, I'd do it over you. Wow. I mean, talk about things really coming together already for the sound, the vision. This album is, again, I don't, I can't, I'm out of words. And it's their second album. I really love In the G Land of Gray and Pink, but I think this might in some ways be better, actually, even though the other one is a favorite. And, you know, I have to play those two and come back, you know. But this is, a, again, for a second album, this is like boom. Okay. Genesis. Genesis's very first album was actually from Genesis to Revelation. 
even they like to consider this their first album, but it's not. It's their second album, Trespass. So the difference between um, their first album, which was songs they really wanted the Bee Gees to do, as it turns out, and it's in their history, well documented, but they end up doing the songs themselves. It's a, I love the album, but from that to this, truly talking about quantum leaps, and they still, this was still incubating, it still wasn't done yet, it still wasn't completely gelled, but the comparison, Trespass is excellent. And you could hear, especially by the end of the album, the knife, that something cool is really going on here. So that's another, for me, stellar second album. Got a few more here. Love this. You got me going. It's been a nice afternoon, so I'm laid back and listening to some music I love and babbling, babbling. Red Lorry, Yellow Lorry, Paint Your Wagon. The first album is called Talk About the Weather, which is good. I mean, I love the, the band, and it came out like gangbusters already. But for an album... This one really, compared to the first album, this one is really great cover for it too. On Fire. Head All Fire is one of the songs. Head All Fire. If you don't know this band, Were they from Leeds? I forget. I love this band. Great second album here. Someone I highly respect who I feel, again, he gets respect and he also, I think, is not, I don't know, I think, I think Todd Rundgren is one of those people who has never been afraid to toot his own horn and I think that has put people off, unfortunately, because I think many people are missing out on his brilliance and his second album. The Ballad of Todd Rundgren is, I think, brilliant already. There's a couple songs in here that are top ten favorites, which I can't say top ten. It beats a top thousand, but, what you know, I love good, beautiful, melancholic songs. Wailing Wall off of here is one of them, and Boat on the Charles is another one. Plus, there's some good, great other songs that are lauded more generally by folks by Todd Rundgren. But I had this forever, so this is an early pressing. Great album. Great album. A few more. You Know My Dogs Are Soft Machine, Volume 2. Their second album. Wow. This is one of my. Ah, can't say enough. Soft Machine Volume 2. This is uh, an American press. I'm going to open these up. Because uh, they're gatefolds on the probe label. Just love this album. Their second album. Love it way better than the first album. Second album is like things are really start popping. And then when they came out with third third was just mind-blowing I mean this is real cool but third is mind-blowing so but second album okay two more blood rock the first album is great but the second one and he even got a hit off of this DOA but from the very beginning of this album this is a great rock and roll album lucky in the morning blood rock 2 and I got to see him live Got to see him on when they were promoting this, the big hit. One of my first big rock concerts. Wow. And then the last one I'll show is, I like this so much better than their first album, Cocteau Twins. Their second album, I think things are really coming together. Head Over Heels. Yeah. This um, really, um, things really start to come together for the Cocteaus on this second album. The first one is got this punkiness to it, which is cool. 
but here that sound and the composing, the, the inners and everything, 4AD, always top notch. This is an original, as you can see. Great second album. So um, there you go, Brett. I um, enjoyed responding. Just got me going about some great records. All right, leave some comments.